What up, my fellow Knicks fans? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease, and don't panic quite yet. Now, I know it's been a tough season, but we're going to try a little something different today. We're going to call up Leon Rose to the People's Court. Yeah, he's been MIA all season. Yup. Yes, sir. Step up to the court. And you see that giant rat right there with the Daily News hat eating that big-ass pizza? Yeah, get him out of here. Mark Berman, you need to step out of here. This is strictly for my neeks. And the reason why I'm calling my man Leon Rose to the stand, because we really haven't heard from him since he first joined the Knicks back in 2020. Matter of fact, June 24th, 2020 to be exact, is when we last heard from him and he spoke to only MSG Networks. Now, I don't blame James Dolan for actually having his own media company and protecting his own narrative, but he's definitely protecting Leon Rose a bit too much given the fact that he joined the Knicks as president with almost a clean slate. He had plenty of cap room. He had his own draft pick to select and his own head coach that he could select. Not too many NBA presidents join teams in which they have that much of a clean canvas to start painting on. So a lot of the decisions that we see that added up to this year, they're gonna have to be answered for. Now in my live chat show, 8th Avenue Conversations, in which any one of you guys could join in and chime in and give you two cents on what's going on with the squad. And for more info on that, definitely check out the description below. But in the last live chat, my man Dominique had emphasized on something that I stressed out in the beginning of the chat. And that was where is Leon Rose to answer some of the questions on some of the moves that were made last summer. And my man Dom further put things into proper perspective as he talked about Leon Rose's positioning. The fact that he was able to draft Obi and he selected a coach like Tibbs, knowing that maybe a player like Obi might not be a good fit. Also, the signing of Evan and Kimball Walker and the clear miscommunication on what's going on with Cam Reddish. As we're beginning to hear some of the rumblings of the frustrations, particularly coming from World Wide West, as he's pointing towards Tibbs. And without further ado, I'm going to run that clip of Dominique speaking in the live chat. And you guys just keep in mind that he's making reference to a lot of the mindset of what was Leon Rose thinking of when he made certain moves. So just keep in mind what was the Knicks position at the time, especially selecting Obi Toppin in the draft, acquiring Evan Fonier and Kimball Walker, the guys that they passed up, and also sacrificing that first round pick for Cam Reddish. What was the thought process? This is where there's a huge gap between us, the fan base, and just understanding what the Knicks front office is doing because right now they're sort of under the protection of the MSG networks. Leon Rose only speaks to the Knicks media with alley hoop questions. So he already knows what's coming and he just sort of gets this soft landing. And this is why there's a huge disconnect. And he's going to have to eventually speak to people other than beat writers every once in a while. He's going to have to open questions up to other media outlets like Bleacher Report, etc. And for those of you who don't believe that Leon Rose is being protected from speaking to the media, don't forget that surprise presser that Steve Mills had back in 2019 with Scott Perry when the Knicks were just messing up only a few games in. I believe that was around November of 2019. Dolan had them answering questions for a season in which they had no expectations. Even the prior season was a losing season. So you can only imagine this year when the Knicks had expectations coming off of the highs of last year. So keep that in mind. So you guys check out this quick clip. And once again, all you fellas are welcome to join the live chat. Just sign up for the email list in the description below. And without further ado. Try it, Dominic. First of all, good evening, guys. I, I, I hope I hope nobody's going to talk over me because I'm going to be kind of quick because I've been listening to you guys. And here, here's where you got to rewind the tape. Now, if you want to ride that horse of switching coaches every year we did that we did the five coaches in six years but again let's rewind the tape just a bit guys who hired leon rose dolan who hired tom thibodeau leon rose so you brought tom thibodeau into the nick organization knowing what kind of coach he was and guess what call it smoke and mirrors call it whatever you want last year the knicks finally got in the playoffs the Knicks finally had a winning season in eight years. The Knicks finally didn't lose 65 games in a season. But now the front office goes out and does this and that. 
And we all know, those that follow it, and I'm not going to debate with y'all, that Tom Thibodeau wanted to keep Bullock. But let's just rewind that tape, too. Because if you look, unless you just watch the games and you don't look at numbers, there's only one player on the Knicks shooting better from three and field goal in the season this year. And that happens to be Fournier. Everybody else has slipped. R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, everybody on the Knicks has regressed. And you want to talk about the coach. Come on, guys. We all have jobs. Sometimes it's an individual task to do things. I don't know who it was, Lance. Let's not say Obi Toppin is this and that. Let's just say Obi Toppin was a bad pick. Because for some of y'all that have been Nick fans for over 10 minutes, the elephant in the room has been a point guard. And we overlooked a point guard to get a power forward, and we had a power forward. Who did that? Leon Rose, Scott Perry, Worldwide West, who hasn't said jack shit all year about what y'all did, what direction we're going in, but then you want to throw the coach under the bus. That's really highly professional, gentlemen. But you haven't heard him say, you know what? This is direction we're going in, uh, Lance. This is the direction we're going in, Rels. We may have made some mistakes along the way. No, they didn't do that. They went and got two point guards. No knock against none of them, gentlemen. But we all know who follow basketball, Kemba Walker and Derrick Rose in the last three, four years hasn't gave you more than 50 games. So now you got two off-injured point guards. You passed on a point guard in the draft. And now all of a sudden, we're going to wave a magic wand and say, it's just the coach's fault. Well, again... If that's the horse you want to ride, God bless you guys. I'm not going to debate that. That's your decision. That's what you're riding with. I'm happy for you. But we started, We really got to look at these clowns we put in positions to make the moves. You did this, guys. Tom Thibodeau didn't do this. I don't care how we debate it. The people up top are the ones that go to the owner. We all know this. They go to the owner. Because I'll tell you this, guys. You can't tell me that you wanted to change things this quickly. When Tom Thibodeau came to this organization and did what Tom Thibodeau does, don't give me the story about he wears players out. We got guys that are 21, 22 years old playing less minutes than LeBron James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the stuff when you saying, bro, is crazy. Minutes, play the kids. Play the, and I'm going to give you all one more thing, guys. When you talk about this front office and you talk about playing the kids, you draft Rells, you draft C.A., But then you go out and sign people to block their progression. You go get a Kemba Walker. You go get a Fournier. So what was y'all thinking when you did this, guys? I mean, again, I am not debating. I'm just saying my point. And maybe somebody could think about that. Because it's been this way forever with the Knicks. Again, if you want to do the five coaches in six years, God bless you. You know, I'm still going to be a fan. But we can't keep doing the wheels on the bus go round and round. You finally got some stability. The Knicks lost 65 games twice before Tom Thibodeau got there. He gets there, they make the playoffs. Now all of a sudden, we ain't looking at none of the players who regress. Check the numbers, guys. Everybody's numbers are down. It took R.J. Barris going 46 points, 36 points, to get his average up over last year by .8. But his shooting is still down. His free throw shooting is still down. The coach can't do that, gentlemen. We all know this. So, again, that seems to be the going thing. Let's get rid of the coach. Again, if, if that's going to make everybody happy, but you still got the same players. You still got the same president. You still got the same GM. So you go on and get rid of the coach because now that coach has to work for these guys. Until they prove themselves, guys, then I'll sit back and say, you know what? They did the best they could. But right now, you can't tell me that. You can't tell me we went from a playoff team to a team that can't get out their own way. And it's simply the coach's fault. It ain't the mixture of players we got. It's simply the coach's fault. Again, guys, I, I appreciate the time. And uh, hang in there, fellas. It Yo, can't get well no said. worse than what we saw. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I actually kind of – I, I got I, I to touch on a few things because I actually – I actually agree on. Yeah, I agree with him. Hundred uh, percent. Uh, uh, because <clears throat> yes, they did. They did pass on the point guards in the draft, and even in free agency, they drug their feet on that. All the point guards ended up getting sucked up really fast, 
and then only thing left was to get a Kimba Walker that was being bought out by OKC and the, the draft choices are the draft choices I, I don't think uh, I, what I think what they were going for I mean the Fournier uh, signing does make sense uh, yeah, they wanted yeah. more. They wanted more shooting, and <laughs> Reggie Bullock was not so a Fournier over DeRozan. It wasn't over DeRozan. It was Fournier over Bullock. No, 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 no. I'm talking about free agency. When Demar DeRozan said his his three choices, they New York, didn't LA, I, Chicago, and we didn't even give the motherfucker an interview. We went straight to go and, and sign Fournier. They, they re- on, and I'll bro. tell you why. They, I'll tell you why they Come did on, that. Bro. I'll tell you why they did that. I'm not saying. Really. I'm not. Say, I'm not saying that it's a smart move. But I'm just saying I can tell you why they did that. It's, it's because me. they thought that putting him next to RJ it's, would again, again. I don't. You don't. You don't have to explain it. A yes is a yes or no answer. Was it dumb or was it not? Is he better or is he not? It's simple answer. There's no explanation. No, yeah. he's not better. It was a dumb decision. And for my man, that's and for talking about um the front office and everything, the front office take the brunt too. But let's not act like we didn't hire Tom Thibodeau and give him power. You gave him power to coach the team. No, no, no. He and he proved what. Let me, he got let me just say something, Nick. That, that, that you bro. brought it up and you take you have a yeah, chance to bring yeah. stuff up. Yeah. And then you want to talk over somebody, but say, again. Bro. You you brought him in here. He did his job. You didn't do your job. Now, if you want to rewind the wheels and go by all the rumors, you know, after the cart is off the horse and say, oh, we didn't get the Rosen. Well, then again, Nick, Nick, I'm, whatever your name is, sir, I don't want to call yeah, you out. Yeah, yeah. Nick King. But you're still going back to who didn't do this. Mm-hmm. Tom Thibodeau didn't have the power to go I'm, talk to free agents. It's still Leon Rose and the rest of these guys calling these shots. CA made a great point. We we can't rewind the clock, guys. We we get it. We're where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. But if you do want to rewind the clock, Nick, then you got to rewind the clock from the top. Yeah, but I'm not asking to rewind the clock, bro. You I'm are. You brought up the Rosen. No, that, but that was because because he was talking about phone it. Uh, is it just that's that's the just dead flat? No, yes, I was. I was. I, I didn't no I didn't yeah, never say but I'm but no, I brought up Four, I, no, I, I brought up Fournier to, to say that he was it wasn't a Fournier over DeRozan you made it seem like they picked Fournier over DeRozan and that wasn't the case they didn't go with DeRozan because they didn't want to put him next to RJ they yeah, thought analytics. that was yeah they they thought that it would analytics. make RJ play worse so they and they wanted more three point shooting and Demar Derozan. This is all things that I really don't want to hear, bro. Because I'm a baller. All you talking about is is dumb analytics, and I know those answers. I agree with you for all of that. I just told the people that already. That's why they got Fournier. I know. I mean, I know ball is ball, but just like you said, it's politics, and those are the politics. The analytics are the politics, right? Right. And that, and that's and that's right. the that's the what they're basing their decisions off of. Mm-hmm. They wanted more three-point shooting. DeMar DeRozan isn't a reputation three-point shooter, right. so they went with Fournier, but they, over now, can over I ask Bullock. You a question? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You know, aside from all of that, you see, as we we going through this, and we see that those are all mistakes. What I'm saying, from my point of view, not a fan or nothing. I'm a hooper. In free agency, would you would you go with your analytics or you going with your eye test? And no, I'm gonna grab me a 20 point per game scorer. That's gonna take the pressure off for Randall, and that's gonna help Barrett because Barrett is not a second wheel. I'm a bowler. This is this is regular stuff. You know they made the mistake. I'm just asking you. In the pool of players, you are gonna pick Fournier to go beside any of your players? I don't care who they are. And you got DeRozan sitting there? But it's not about who we it's, would it's, pick, it's, though. I know, but this is what it is about. We we in the chat is about what we would do. Because they already fucked up. We playing Monday morning quarterback, really. Like, Bro, yeah. all I'm saying is, we know they messed up. I'm agreeing with you. They fucked that pack up. Now, I'm asking you. We got a pool of players. Because they messed it up. Now, you got a chance to write it. We got a, we got them two players. Who you choosing to pick? 
Well, again, we in the park. We in we in the park. I, I, I play ball. We in the park. We in a tournament. I want to play that could do more than. You know what I'm saying, who you picking? Nick, Nick, I don't think nobody. Man, man. I don't think nobody. And, and, and nobody's you. disagreeing with you right, at, at that point right either. Saying. But All the right, thing cool. is, we again, we on the line aren't calling the shots. Nobody's saying you're wrong, Nick. Mm -hmm. Because if you had a chance to get. Let, let's let's just say this dumbness since we're playing Monday nah, morning it's not quarterback. Dumb, it's not dumb. It's not dumb. No, I'm no, just saying that. No, that was a fact. That was a, that was just, really. Let me finish, Nick. Since you're giving hypotheticals, because that's what we're doing now. We're it's playing. It's not too hypothetical, bro. It is because it didn't happen. It didn't happen, but we had a. It, it was a chance. Right. It so let me ask you a question, Nick. Let me ask you a question. Now that we rewound the clock and we're mm -hmm. all GMs today. Mm -hmm. Would it would it have been would it have been safer? Because this is my theory on what the Knicks did. Their front office, mm -hmm. they tried to progress, but they did it safely. Rewind the clock. Would it have been a bad idea? And I am not a fan of this, guys. I'm just looking at production and availability. For the same price, we got Kemba Walker on his buyout. We could have got Dennis Schroeder for the same money. Yeah. Facts, facts, facts. For the yeah. same with that, yeah. and, and, and also. And also, uh, not to cut you off, Dominic, but also, but also with 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 Fournier, you you got to understand is that they were banking on uh, Julius and RJ being their two main guys. Again, I agree with that, but that's what I say. That's the coach. That's, that was that listen. wasn't the coach. That was the you know that I'm was no. That. That's, that's not my point in saying the. That's coach. the. I'm talking about the that's focus no, of the organization. But look, like, see what, what we keep missing is. Tibbs is here for a reason. He got fired because he didn't have control. In New York, he got say so. Julius no, no, he, Randall, no, he did get fired because he this, had control in Minnesota. No, 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 no. In Minnesota, he had control in Minnesota. He was, he was president more, of basketball operations. Yeah, he, no, he, he was no, he yeah. was president. He was president of basketball operations. Yeah, that's facts. Well coach that's in Minnesota. True. That's he true. He had, he, yeah, he had he, full he, control. He, no, he, he had full control. He signed the players. Yeah, he Why did. Do you think Luau Dang got all that yeah. money. He 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 did those contracts. He yeah. traded Zach Levine. He did all. Yeah, of he that. did all that. No, facts. That's all facts right there. No, he was the he was the president, but he wanted to be the GM or some shit. Anyway, the, the president you, the president is above the no, GM. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had full control, like personnel, the, everything. The GM was just a cap guy. Yeah, I mean, the GM, like, really the GM just it's just a representative that talks to the other representative of the team. But no, they no, they just put everything together, and then the president of operations they they bring it to the the owners, the and then they get yeah. and get it signed off on. Right. But anyway. Tibbs had that position, he had that power, and he got fired because he had that power, and he failed at that. Anyway, yeah, he failed miserably. Put that on top of that, he failed miserably at that. Let me say something. What was what was D Rose's advice to the young guys when when they asked him like, "How do you deal with Tom Thibodeau?" Don't look at the sidelines. Don't, don't look him, at the sideline. Don't pay him no mind. What that say about the coach? I'm not saying it's the coach's fault. But I'm he saying he shit. lacks complete offensive identity. Maybe he'll get to motivate you on defense, but do you see the chess that they play? That's what he if you watch other teams play and then you watch his play, that ball is stuck. Like, it's so much iso ball. It's, there's Thank no you. movement. Thank there's you. no cut. Thank you, bro. They're playing outside in. They're going to the target. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, smart man. Thank you. That's the first then, person that said something about basketball. That's not how you play ball. You play ball Thank inside you. out. Inside Everybody out. knows Thank that. No, but, we, but we've said that earlier in here, though. <laughs> yeah, we've, said, we've, been, we've, been, we've said that earlier. We've said we said. Tibbs' offensive sets are terrible. We said terrible. that earlier well, in here already. And what a good coach would do. I, well, I'm not going to work. Okay, I'm not. Surround himself with people. Nobody here is absolving Tibbs of his lack of adjustments, of his bad lineups. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we did. We just said the blame isn't all on him. That's what we were saying. Right. Yeah. No, no, we're not. No, we, uh, no wait, wait a minute. Wait, let me finish. Nah, nah, nah. Let me, nah, let me, nah, nah. I got, I got to finish. I got to finish. So, nah, I didn't get it all. Because, because it, it, we're not saying we're, Tibbs is not absolved of his bad rotation, of his running his starters too too many minutes. He's not absolved of his coaching blunders, his bad rotation, his bad starting lineups. 
He's not a cause of any of that. All of that stuff is his fault. And that does transpire on what happens on the actual court. But the getting of the actual players that he got were outside of his control. That was he can have he could have he could have say and say, Hey, I, I, I would like this guy, I would like this guy, but at the end of the day, Scott Perry, Leon Rose, World Wide West, those are the guys that are make that are that have the last final say on who gets signed and who doesn't and for how much. So it's part on their part of the blame does fall on the front off as well as Tibbs yeah. coaching um, blunders. Like That's it's what not it's, it's not just before. one person. Two things can be true. He can be a bad coach, and the front office could do a bad job as well. Mm. Our big fault was that we had a functional point guard in D Rose, right? And then what happened? D Rose stopped. D Rose stopped, and we had no one to replace him. But we got Deuce McBride on the bench. You telling me he can't do a better job than Burks? Leon Rose gave you gave you a functional point guard. You're not even seeing what you have in him. That's what I'm trying to say too. So it's like, yeah, yeah, there could be more point guard talent. D Rose not being there took a big hit on the team, but I I, I don't want to yeah. say it's it's like either more Leon Rose's fault or Tom Thibodeau's fault. Well, Ray, are you up next? Go ahead. But both share share blame, and we're seeing the the effect. But like D Rose not being there, that's just period. That's number one. All right, I'm done. Go ahead, Rail. What's good, y'all? How y'all doing? Yeah, um, yeah. so so like I I pretty much all you guys are right. You really need to sit back and listen to all you guys' point of views. Like I understand when Nick Steen was come out in the sense of you gotta play situational basketball. Even if you don't, like, like I've been saying in other spaces, even if you don't have a point guard, that's been the, the whole thing for the whole year. So why are these people, why are kids not doing like motion basketball? Just like I brought up last night, you play like a, even my Mike D'Antoni system, right, when Steve Nash went down, he said, okay, I want everybody on the starting five to at least get one or two assists. If you do, that's one or two assists, that's 10 assists right there for the quarter or even for the half. Pass the ball around. I see when the Knicks, when Randall's sitting on the bench, I'm seeing these guys playing motion basketball. They're moving that ball around. Everybody's getting to the good man. If you if you have an open shot, but you just pass it to the other guy who has a better shot, you go win. Say you shoot a shit ton of three fucking points, you're going straight to the hole for a high percentage shot and hopefully you get fouled. Right? And then I think that people talk about Tibbs do got, but I blame Tibbs majority of the time because, yes, the front office is going to get the place who they're going to get. But at the end of the day, how much is going to be the excuse? They didn't trade nobody except for one person. They sold a bag of peanuts to, to get a fucking an appetizer that plays half the time, right? So you know what you got. Only one person in the rotation got changed. So you know what you got at the beginning of the season. So at the end of the day, to me, the blame on Tibbs leaves 70%. So I'm looking at someone like the Miami Heat. I'm looking at the these, these um Cavaliers, these good defensive teams, right? You got to coach your team. You're going to get what's in front of you. You got to coach it. Because at the end of the day, you're showing everybody you're a shitty coach because you're not coaching up your team, right? So if you say Randall's playing bad or Burke's playing bad, sit their asses down. Because if you're going to be feared of getting fired, well, the team blew another fucking 15-point lead. So you might as well bench these motherfuckers and play some of these young guys, right? So that way you know what you're going to get. If they're going to be here for the long run or they're only going to be here for, uh, I mean, excuse me. Either they're going to be here for the long run or they're going to be good trade bait. And this is this, this, this is the shit that I, in mind bothers me. Like, we blew this lead. Okay. So you might as well play more of the young guys than fuck it. We already know you're going to fucking lose this game, right? I'm mad I paid fucking $50 on the fucking parlay. You know what I'm saying? But this shit this crazy. I just feel like all oh, y'all right. You know, it's it's a shame that Leon Rose don't come and talk just to say what's going to be the direction. I'm not saying I want to hear from Leon Rose all the time, but it's pretty sad that we got Jimmy Buss to go on the podium and take questions when you can't find Leon Rose. But with the whole to his point, I, I, um, I agree with Nick's in the sense of he has to take 70% of the blame because you know why? One guy, one guy was traded. You can't tell me you can't coach up this team. Nah, I don't want. I don't want here. He's a defensive coach. So what? Okay, you got. You got to do your job. He don't even listen to his own assistants. That's another bad thing. That's just my point of view. And can I? Can I just respond to Rels? Because I think me and Rels had this conversation before. You uh-huh. make a great. You make a great point, Rels. When the second unit comes in, they do this. But when the starters are in, 
they do this. So is exactly. it is it one group is listening and one group ain't? One group can't get from their brain to their ears to the court <laughs> in a right. timely fashion. I don't know. We had this conversation, bro. That right. if if these guys are doing it, who's coaching them? When when the reserves come in, do we switch coaches? When the starters come back in, do we put Thibodeau back in? Again, I always say this, guys. I always say this. Sooner or later, you got to look at an individual task. We all been there. We've all right. got individual tasks at work. For those of y'all at work, you have a job to do. Somebody tells you what to do, unless you're in charge. Don't get me wrong. But you have a job to do. You stay in your lane. You do your job. And it's ironic, Rels, Rels brings this up again, and I always go back to, well, damn, if these guys are doing it and these guys ain't doing it, we really have a problem. We do. And again, no, when, we you, when you look at all the numbers mm -hmm. and you look at every individual on the Knicks, except, I hate to say it, Fournier. I'm not a fan of him. I'm not a fan of the sign. Oh, his shooting numbers are up. So. He's the only one on the team yeah, that is like shooting better than he did last year. He's like in Aaron. line with it. He's in line with his averages. Like right. We're, we're, he is what he is. Now, again, if you thought when we got 48, we were getting Jerry West. Well, <laughs> that's, that's your fault. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on Sid, real quick. So, like, Dom, what's up, my brother? So, yeah, so I, I agree with you to a certain extent. Like, my thing is, like, well, I think when um, Mix King, and correct me if I'm wrong, was saying, you guys signed, you can't got fucking DeRozan. DeRozan said it out his own mouth. I saw him on TV mm -hmm. say, I was going. I wanted to sign one in New York, but they went to sign Fournier and Kemba. Like, come on, you signed two bench players, but you won't sign a starter. Now, well, they, he's, he's going to. He's doing like a whole offense explosion, playing MVPs. I think he has something to prove. He went to the doghouse in um, San Antonio, where Pop taught him the right way. Forget the record. Forget the record. Pop showed him how to be a championship player. Pop showed him how to be a championship player, right? Why would uh, yeah. sign the The reason why we the reason I told you why we couldn't sign DeRozan because the franchise was banking on Julius and RJ being those two main guys, so they didn't want to get anybody that was going to outshine those two guys. They but just wanted to add. Uh, and they we wanted that. Well, no, I know, but they well, what they wanted was more consistent three point shooting. So what? Yeah. What that's what Fournier brought or was supposed to bring. He was supposed to be a better version offensively than um, uh, than Reggie Bullock because you know what what happened with Reggie Bullock last year. He'd be good for three, you know, two quarters, and then he disappear for the rest of the game. Um, so they they figured they would get more consistent three point shooting, and then Kimba would have that playmaking ability and. Him and Derrick Rose were supposed to stagger minutes. Remember, they were only supposed to pay like 20 minutes apiece. Right. <clears throat> and uh, that was the plan. But, you know, you know, the season happens and Tibbs just didn't adjust the way that he was supposed to adjust with the roster. I mean, the roster is the roster. I mean, you know, GM and them, them niggas ain't make no move. So they were stuck with who they were stuck with. But they, they, this, it was malleable. Like they could, they could have changed things around to make the lineups work, to mix the young guys with the veterans, and to Fournier would kill on the second unit. I don't know why they feel like they have to start him. I don't know why they feel like they have to start Burks. They could start a quickly at point guard, but he doesn't have to play 38 minutes. You know what I mean? They could actually stagger those minutes out amongst the other guards. Like it doesn't have to be like that. But that's Tibbs issue and also the front office hired all of Tibbs um, assistant coaches for him. He didn't actually those are none of his guys. Right. The, the sad the, the sad biggest, thing guys are gonna stop after this. The sad thing is is the Knicks tried to catch up to the NBA in one summer. The NBA has been an offensive driven league. I agree with it or not, the shooting the threes, all of that. The NBA has been doing this for years. The Knicks are behind. They've been behind on this. So all of a sudden, you wanted to change this up <laughs> in like six months. And then you look at the pieces they got, and they really didn't even fit to what the NBA was doing. Guys, 
the Knicks are 26th in offense and 18th in defense. They're 28th in pace. This is the new NBA. I don't care who you got coaching unless you get a, I hate to say his name, Mike Dan Antoni, who created this nonsense. But it's funny how he created it. Everybody jumped on it except the Knicks. And now they want to change it overnight. When they had Dan Tony, they wouldn't run it. They didn't have the point guard to run it. Right. Yeah, they did it. Because they traded they, they, they had they had like Alexi Shabed or whatever his fucking <laughs> name was. And then Melo yeah. stopped it. That's what most importantly. Melo came through, he's a ball stopper. He's gonna stop that type of uh free flowing offense. So they couldn't do it. That was a clash between yeah. Melo and uh and yeah. um Dan Tony. That was the main issue. Yeah. And that and that began our five coaches in six years. Remember that, guys. We did this. We've been there. We've done that. We've tanked. We've gotten piss poor picks. So it's not like we've never seen this movie before, guys. We're just seeing it with different people doing it. But All we right. as fans have seen this movie. Again, me and Rel's always have these conversations. We've seen this movie. Right, right. We, right. We've seen this movie. We, are, we have. We have seen this movie. But we also have seen this Tom Thibodeau movie in two other franchises as well. <laughs> and we know how this, we know how the movie ends. So right. why are we, why are we going to stick with the same movie ending? Like, we might as well just fast forward it to the end of the movie and get to the part where the we end up killing the monster guy and just get rid of Tibbs because he's the clearly risk of firing not... is if you hire somebody worse <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah but yeah it's, it's yeah. like because like, I, 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 I'm not gonna lie I don't want Kenny Atkinson like that's not a guy like he was yeah why, don't get me wrong why, he was good with I don't get me wrong he was good with the Nets he was good with those guys he built those guys up he did a, well, a great good. job with them guys but I just like, for I, this team you see, you see I, what he did with Golden State but you, you see what he did with Golden State did you see yeah. what he did with the, the Nets in the bubble he's this that's the problem we need a coach that's gonna develop develop the players I know what people give Doc Rivers so much um, criticism and maybe rightfully so but you know the one two things he does very well one he listens to assistant coaches all day every day and all his assistant coaches get head coaches jobs right and they swear by him two just like Maxi right now he's showing everybody he plays his young guys and if you do the right thing right and you play within the offense he won't let you shine that's right. Doc Rivers that's and Kenny Anderson he, what, he I, did, what he did with the, the Nets in the bubble with no stars, with just a bunch of average Joes, he did great. Look what that look what he's doing with Jordan Poole right now. They call him the Dirt Slash Brother. Kuminga. Like, All right, well, I got a response to that. Uh, that but that's also I, when you I, get I, that's also when you get an uh, organization that's working with you. Right. That's that's a that's a point. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like they're not they're clearly not working with Thibodeau. Like Oh, stop saying that, bro. Stop saying that. I'm not that. sure if that's true. Stop well, I, well, all right, all right, all right. To an extent, they are I'm making. That, they they are. Not, they can't. Like, they, I'm, 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 no, that they are making moves that they're not consulting. They, they didn't consult him on the Cam Reddish trade. That that just didn't happen. So they what? made. They no, they did the deal. That that Cam that's Reddish not is better than R.J. Barrett. Point blank. Period. No, Every day not. of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, and the next Sunday, he's better than him. Maybe in high school, man. Not right now. Maybe in high school. Not right now. Bro, bro, Cam Reddish got more than that. We talking about, look, I don't know how many of y'all play ball and how many of y'all good at it, but we talking about when you look at TV and you see a player, automatically you know what nice is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Ooh, good because he's on the Knicks and he's getting that opportunity. If Cam Reddish get the ball in his hand as much as RJ, you bugging. You Yo, bugging. But you know, I put Cam is... He's gonna settle for that mid range when RG's nah. gonna take it to the rack and get those free we, just, we see him get to the hole and lay it up and dunk it on people. I know. The little bit of mid range. He's going up. Sample, sa the sample size is too small for me. Exactly, um, but the sample I, I, size is the only minutes he's getting, bro. I, even, I, even on the Hawks, he didn't. He was right. not on, bad on either. But at the end, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, Nick, I don't think nobody's I don't think nobody's gonna debate it with you. I, I happen to live in North Carolina. So right. I watched I watched the Reddish Zion Barrett routine. Yeah. And, Reddish, and was Barrett the, Reddish was the best player than, on that team. Right. Other than other than Zion, Barrett was that guy. But I always look at 
where Reddish was the best player when we watched college basketball that year every announcer was saying he was the best player on Duke now, yeah, again, best college I'm player. Sure. Right, again, the best I'm not, college I'm player. Not, I'm right, I'm not. I'm not debating that with you. The only thing, the NBA, right? The only thing I'm trying to say, player. the only thing I'm trying to say, Nick, is with all that talent, we we don't see what goes on behind closed doors and all of that. We all get that, but for Politics. some for some reason, Politics. the Atlanta Hawks went and signed everybody else, but he was the odd man out. They now, can't again, afford him though. They, I'm not you know, saying everybody knew that. I'm Yo, just saying that again, minutes like that. For, 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 but for some reason, with him getting minutes, and of course he got hurt, so we got to take that out. Of the not, last I'm, he was hurt. I'm just saying, the Atlanta Hawks now, maybe they have a bizarre front office like us, but they overlooked him and went and got players that basically mirrored him. And now you rewind the tape with the Knicks are doing. They yeah, look, look out you see, the look, you always that mirror the players you have. Uh huh. So how does Every, everybody get minutes? I must look, look. <laughs> I hear all of that, right? Bottom line, it sound like to me what you're saying is like because they gave they gave up on him or they got rid of him or, or I don't know. But all I'm saying is, with opportunity comes success for anybody in this world. Anybody with opportunity comes success, bro. He's better than him. Point and what, blank. What we saying Point is blank. If he get the ball, look, I'm gonna show you this. You watch the game tonight, right? Like I kept pointing out what RJ was doing until he finally started passing the ball to Mitch. Every time he got the ball, he wasn't passing the ball. He can't get by nobody if he's not trying to use the brute strength and use the left hand layup. While on the other hand, when we see Cam get the ball on a pick. He split the split the pick like nice bowlers do. A lot one play. Young. No, no, no. It's one play. No, I'm, 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 I'm it's one play. Listen, I know I'm what play you're talking about, back. but it's one play. How many times you seen RJ Barrett split the pick and roll? Zero plays in three years. Facts. Thank you. This is what I'm talking about. A Dame Lillard, a Chris Paul, a John Morant. These are nice players that will split. You got moves. You could. I'm pretty sure if I With Google you. it, I could find it. Listen, we don't need time off the rip. This is how many times. Look, boom, off the rip. I watch my team forever. RJ is good. He's a good player. He's a good player. He's not, he's not, he's, he don't have the talent as this brother has. Period. Period. You may, you may Period. be right, Nick, because I'm Period. And I'm not I'm not throwing nobody under the bus. Period. I like Again, RJ. I watch I watched RJ Barrett in college. I watched all the ACC games. I watched them in college. And his his progression. From then to now, and oh, I, he's better. I understand he's better. Nick fans. I understand Nick fans. They latch on to something, somebody, and That's all of a sudden do. he's this. Yep. But I haven't seen, and please, people, don't kill me. I have not seen the progression, as you would say, Nick, watching the Nick games. I, I have to pay for the fucking Nick games where I live. Oh, yeah, but yeah. watching, watching the games, and watching him from college. And granted, he only played one year. But watching him from college to now, and again, don't trust me. Look at the numbers. See where his progression has been. It's no, not agree. that great for a third round pick, a third pick. Well, I'm just saying. So? I'm not bashing the guy. Well, well okay. nobody, I, nobody I, touted I, him as a. I, I agree with you. Like, we all knew most, that draft was on. a two person draft. For most, for most Knicks fans, this is why I, 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 I get on them hard. Because like I tell people, it could be my brother. I don't care. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah, he my player. But what Knicks fans do, like you say, they latch on. Because most of them is new Knicks fans. So we've been they've been through all of the losing and they just so desperate. But I'm not like that. I want success. And that's why when we talk about um the front office, yeah, they got blame. That coach got a lot of this fucking blame too. A lot. Yeah, a lot. That's politics. Yo, I'm not going to say He's you're wrong. Stubborn. But He's I got a lot. Of I think RJ's not going to be a superstar. Like Wait, Nick, man. at me, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Rose, you saw that. Rose, you saw that how hard they came at me for saying I don't think RJ is going to be a superstar. Hello, I, everybody. I, What's going on? I, I, but no, I don't think. But everybody knew in that draft. Like, I don't think it was a secret that that draft that he was in was a two-player draft. I think that was the, cons- the main consensus about that draft. 
was it was the first two picks and it was everybody else which was Ja and Zion and then you know the consolation prize was RJ Barrett uh, uh, even if even if the point the point I'm trying to make though, though is that like RJ Barrett doesn't have to be a superstar we're not building around RJ Barrett he's just a piece and we're going to develop him we're not going to give him the mask the max right he's not untouchable nothing like that but you want to see him develop, and if you do trade him, you're going to trade him for a player that's like an established star, right? Just because he got potential, he got the work ethic, he's performing somewhat. But what I want to say is, um, you said Cam Reddish is a better player. I would say this, Cam Reddish has got more talent. He's a smoother athlete. He gets to the rim at will. Like, the way he comes up, gets to the rim and, like, finishes softly. That That's that's work of art. That's, like, PG status. But he does, he's not doing this day in, day out. But there's a lot of times he's settling for jumpers, look for his guy. And, and some days he does have that feel. Like, you, you see him, like, dribble, like, passing off the dribble, like, all that. Like, he could play, but I don't think he's consistent enough to be an impactful enough player to say that he's better than R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett just having a bigger impact, even if he's not more talented. Is, is he having a bigger impact? Hello, Lord. I'm... From Iran. Is, is he having a bigger impact due to the team he's on? I, I'm, I'm just asking because, again, yes. when, you, when you look, if you look at his trajectory so far, it's probably mid-level. And I agree with you, C, that the, 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 the lot of the picks weren't that good at that time. I, I, I understand that. So you're right. We got the consolation prize. But again, we as Nick fans, or some as Nick fans, because of where we've been for so long, that we always think, some, that this is the next Patrick Ewan, the next Walt Frazier, the <laughs> next. Instead of us just sitting back and saying, you know what? Again, y'all use the word development all the time. Let's see how he is when we develop him. There are some guys, like Nick said, there are some guys you could look at, and I think somebody's uh, K money sign. Yeah, you could see pure talent in some, but is there something missing between the pure talent and actually putting it into action? Total yeah, hard work. That's, that's the case at times. Work. But again, is it is it a product of what we're doing, guys? I, I guess that's my whole gist of chiming in: is what we're doing and who we're getting. Other than the coach, because it's going to be the same player. So yeah, is it something for the players that man. get Mark Jackson, man? That's it. Mark Jackson will never play again. But but no, no, guys, I, I just want to I I I thank y'all for letting me chime in. I don't want to just hang up. Ralph told me I'm not polite when I do that. So I want to thank you guys, <laughs> man. It's been a great conversation. <laughs> I appreciate it, fellas. Thank I you. Always love Dominic. No man. question, Dominic. Right, thank man, you, man. No question.